I would like to begin with a little bit of silence. I began this year actually in 42 days of silence. And it wasn't a meditation retreat. I didn't go up into a cave and sit and meditate on my own. Rather, I was in my general life. I was interacting with people just as I would otherwise. Actually, I was on tour in Australia. And as I traveled and as I connected with different people, the intention of the silent practice was one of deepening my connection, deepening the communication that actually happened. There's this place within us, deep, deep within us, that when we tap into it, when we listen, not with our ears, but with our hearts, we start to feel that authentic core, that place where we all connect, that we all are the same, are complete, are pure. And so as I did this practice, my intention was to listen, to observe, to hold space. While I was doing this, I was allowed to read this beautiful poem, and I'd like to share that with you now. Our first encounter was quite brief, a single breath inhaled. Like this, an angel came to me and changed my entire world. In fact, as I reflect, it dawns on me that I have had countless encounters with graceful beings. I realize I have been surrounded all my life by similar bright lights, these angels simply asking that we trust, that we hear, that we let our hearts shout forth beyond all our fears. They are like a million raindrops falling into a pond, and in the moment of first contact, an expression ripples out. This is connection flowing forth across a million angels' hands. So for those of you who know me, you know that everything that I do is always about connection. To me, connection is the significance of life. Because connection is the only thing that's permanent. The objects of connection, the stuff that's at the end of that connective line, they come and they go. It might be your possessions, it might be your relationships, it might be anything that is an expression that comes in to your life, gets expressed, and then moves on. Yet that space in between, that potential for that expression, it remains. And that's what I mean when I say holding space. So we're going to take a journey today. My hope is that this isn't just a talk. My hope is that we connect through this entire experience, and that by the time I come off the stage, you feel like a community and a family. Now, I can't say that I always felt this way about connection. When I was younger, when I was in high school, and throughout most of my adolescence, I was actually quite afraid to connect. Every time that I had to go and even touch somebody on the shoulder to move past them, I couldn't do it. I felt like I was invading their space. And so I lived most of my life, especially in high school, very lonely. And the funny thing about being lonely is it can only happen when you're surrounded by people and you feel like you're apart from them. So when I finished high school, I decided, okay, I've got to do something to get over this fear of connection. I've got to, to boost my self-confidence and, and move out of this. And so I joined the U.S. military. I was young. You don't think so straight at that time. Well, it did work because by the time I came out of all my training and I started college, I had absolutely no trouble connecting anymore with people. Rather, quite the opposite. I ended up becoming well known as the massage man in my college dormitory. And so <laughs> I enjoyed that reputation. And one day when I was sitting down at the uh, front desk, because I used to check IDs also, I'm checking IDs and I would just sit somebody in front of me and start giving them a shoulder massage. And I was doing this one day when one of the university officers walked in. And just out of curiosity, he came up to me because he saw this person paying me afterwards. I had started to charge. I made it a business. And he comes up and goes, oh, where'd you get your license? I kind of looked at him. I was like, license? What are you talking about? And he goes, well, you, you know that you need a massage license to, to charge for money and, and any service that you're touching somebody. I said, oh. And then he also informed me that if you don't have licensing, it's technically prostitution. So business went up after that. And no. <laughs> I decided, okay, I should probably go ahead and get the certification. I thought I was only going to get the lowest certification possible so I could continue my business legally. 
and uh, I ended up falling in love with it. I continued on. I went to the highest degree of licensing, got certified in 21 plus different modalities, started teaching, opened my own centers in San Diego, started traveling the world, creating websites like Integrated Potential and Community Backstage and these things where the idea was to bring people together in connection because that was something that I had been so afraid of when I was younger. And eventually brought me here to get to speak with all of you and share. So, Here's the question. How do you start to connect? How do you hold that space? Well, the very first thing that you need to do is you need to understand what the art of presence is. Because if you're not present, if you're not actually here, you can't connect. <laughs> it's a logistics thing. So, <laughs> I'd like to share a story with you. The, the very first Buddha, Gautama Sakyas, the original, he exemplifies this idea of presence. You see, after he had already built up quite a following and a lot of people knew of him. They had asked him to come and speak and thousands and thousands of followers had come to see him, to hear his wise words. And they built this huge stage for him to go up on and to, to expound his knowledge. And as he stepped up onto the stage, he looked down and on the stairs, he saw a lotus blossom growing and he knelt down and he picked it up. And he went up on stage and without saying a word, he simply sat there twirling it enjoying it, mesmerized by that moment. And the audience was kind of like, and he continued for a few more minutes, and the audience continued like, and after about 10 minutes, the audience was like, <laughs> until finally he saw one person in the audience that was smiling. And he went down and he handed them the blossom. You see, had his mind been in the past, or actually more so, if his mind first had been in the future in the expectations of what the audience was wanting to hear, he never would have noticed the flower. He would have walked right past it. Had his mind been in the past thinking about flowers he had seen it before, he would have just compared it. The mind is really good at doing this. And he would have seen the flower and gone, hey, flower, I've seen them before. But he was so intensely in the present moment that he picked the flower because it was the only thing of significance the only connection for him right then. And so that lecture, that silent lecture, because he walked off stage after that, he said nothing, became one of his most famous lectures. Because he exemplified presence, being in this moment. There's a way that we can all be that moment, that we can all see each other as that flower. Now, it takes a little bit more than just presence, because in presence, you're there, and that's great, <laughs> but then you have to become aware of what's around you. You have to actually become aware of the potential of expression that's there. I'll give you an example of what I mean by the potential of expression. There was a time back in San Diego when I had my center, I was asked to come and lead a meditation at a festival. There was about 10,000 people, it's a big festival, <laughs> out in the audience, and I stood up on stage and I said, all right, before we meditate, I'd like to breathe with you all. Now, when I say breathe, I don't mean just inhaling and exhaling. I want you to actually say breathe with me. And so the audience was kind of nodding their heads, saying, okay. So I said, breathe, and then the audience went, breathe. I said, breathe, and the audience was, breathe. It got really boring really fast, and so I went, breathe. And the audience was dead silent. I said, great, close your eyes, meditate, you're there. <laughs> what happened is I took away expectation. Because if the mind is full of expectation, full of what they're expecting to do, hear, say, whatever it is, there is no room to actually see and experience what's really there. So there is the art of presence coming into this moment, and then there is expressing from that moment, letting that that thing from deep within bubble up. It's like when you have that authentic laughter. It comes from nowhere. You don't <laughs> It just happens. You don't know what's going on. So, bringing yourself into the present moment. Connecting with what's actually happening. And then there's a little bit more. You see, there's this thing about human beings. We have different layers. And within those layers, there are different places in which we get to connect. 
The first layer is what I like to call the mask. Now the mask is essentially the way we present ourselves to everybody. It's the roles that we play, the identities that we have. And this mask, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing that when you're in a heated argument with somebody, and you're sitting there, you're yelling back and forth, and then the phone rings, you're like, oh, hello. No, I can't talk right now. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's that thing that lets you switch back and forth really fast. It doesn't really go in congruency with what you're feeling. That's the first part. And the mask is essentially your body. We go a little deeper and we get to what I call the story. The story is your mind. The story is how you see, see and tell yourself who you are. It's your beliefs, your conditioning, your memories. It's everything that has ever made up who you are. Now, here's the thing about that layer. It's a tricky layer. Because if, let's say you take a, a cup and you start to pour water into the cup. And that water is all the conditioning, all the memories, experiences, things that you've been told, things that you have said, things you believe about yourself, you believe about others. And you start to pour it all into this cup, and it starts to fill the cup up. And then you become identified to those beliefs and all that knowledge, and you think, yes, that is me. Well, that water freezes. It becomes a big frozen block of ice. What happens when you take a big block of ice and you just set it out? It melts. And the thing is, when we get attached to all these things, is we forget the cup was there. We forget there was a container holding the space for us to express and be within. And so instead, the ego or this identified self, this block of ice, starts frantically looking for more expressions to put and attract and to put into itself so that it exists. Because it thinks, if I melt away, I stop existing. All it is is that we forgot the cup. So how do you define the cup? How do you define this space, this container? You can't. It's nothingness. It is the potential of expression. And so you have to simply hold space for it. This is kind of where the leap of faith, the trust, comes in. I'm going to give you some secrets, though. Because the third level, so we had the first level, the body, the mask. We had the second level, the mind, the story. The third level is this place that is the cup. It's that place from which all expression comes up. So this third level, you could call it soul, you can call it the divine, you can call it your essence, your driving force, Wilbur, whatever you want to call it, you can call it that. And recognize that when you reach that place deep within, there is a resonance, a connection that already happens because that same place that's really deep within you is the exact same place that's in every single other person. Have any of you ever heard of sympathetic resonance? It's this idea or theory that things will vibrate at the same frequency if they are in close proximity. So if you, and they've actually done experiments with this, if you take a violin and you start to play one string, and you have another violin tuned to the exact same you know, tightness on the strings and all that, and you have it nearby, as you start to play on the one violin, the other violin starts to vibrate on the same string. It's the same for us. When we hold ourselves in that place of authentic expression, in absolute presence, and we're just there, we start to vibrate in this certain way that attracts the same authenticity from other people. So here's the secret back door to getting that authentic connection, because normally you would have to go through the mind and through the body. And the mind and the body are like these clouds up in the sky that kind of create these memories and thoughts and all this stuff to get in the way. So the secret is, one, let it rain. When it rains, most people, they seek cover. They put an umbrella up. They're like, eh, it's going to get wet. Now, the umbrella is like your shell. It's your identity. It's your way of saying, no, I'm quite happy my, with my reality. Don't take that away from me. But the rain just comes down, and it washes away what was there. It takes you to the deeper levels. It shows you the truth beneath. So you let it rain. You put the umbrella down. That's the first step. That's the art of presence. By putting the umbrella down, you let go of all the ego and the identities and the attachments, and you start to see the world. The second step is to express. So you start to dance in the rain. Let yourself just go wild. Allow that rain to move you, the moment to move you. The third step, and this is where most people kind of go astray, is they're so happy and so uh, elated from what they experience that they go running to everybody else who has an umbrella, and they go, come, you have to dance in the rain with me. Come, put that down. Put that down. Come. The person's like, no, no, I like my umbrella. 
You see, you can't do it that way because the second you go to them saying, no, this is the truth, you have to see it, you've put an umbrella back up. Here's the secret. You go to them, you've put your umbrella down, you're fully present, you're expressing your authenticity, and you go to them and you step underneath their umbrella. And you're there, absolutely enjoying their presence, who they are, their essence. You go with interest and gratitude, not an agenda of change. So I'd like to give you that experience. If you come to the edge of your seats, <laughs> And I want you to look to your right at the person that's there, and then I want you to look to your left at the person that's there. <laughs> if there's not a person, imagine a person there. <laughs> look back straight forward, take a deep breath. Exhale. Look to your right again. Look to your left. This is so entertaining. Look back forward, inhale. Exhale. And notice at the very point that your inhale and your exhale meet, there is a seed of inspiration. There is a place deep within you, and that place starts to grow. Let it start to rise up in you, and as it rises up, let it take the corners of your lips upward and out. This is an ancient technique. I call it smiling. Let it go all the way up. Start to look around again. You'll notice that when you practice this and you look around, it grows. You can't help it. Don't try. And if there's anything that you take from this talk today, please take this smile. Because if you go out into the world and you show your authentic self, your beauty, who you really are through that smile, not just through your mouth, but through your eyes and every gesture that you make and the presence that you have, you'll invite others to do the same and we can change the world.